This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. So, today's complaint is that the low boy drawers are not working properly. But when I got here this morning, they're at 35 degrees, at least on this thermostat. So we're gonna go through and start diagnosing these and seeing what's going on. Also, haven't talked to the manager yet. I said hi to him, but I need to get the full rundown as to what's going on. Looks like all the coils are evenly distributing the air and it's even temperatures across them. I've got the thermal imaging camera and we're looking to see what the temperatures are. 22 degrees, move on over. Twenty-five degrees. Twenty-four degrees. This is discharge air temp. Thirteen degrees. What the heck? There you go. Twenty-one degrees. Okay. So it seems that every coil is working. So the, I did get some clarification from the manager and they said that there was no power at all. But there's power this morning. Um, the only thing that controls the power on these coils that is downstairs is a breaker. And then he was asking me where the breaker was. So this might be a nuisance call, I don't know. But we're gonna look at the big picture, jump on the roof, take a look at everything. It's currently raining, so I'm trying to be as cautious as possible. So that's a good sign. The frame rate doesn't show it correctly, but all the condenser fan motors are running. This is my Cook's drawers. Running with a clear side glass. And it's cold and wet outside, so that's a pretty good sign. That means the head pressure control valve is uh, being fed the right amount of refrigerant. Um, the best time, it's not the coldest day of the year, but the best time to uh, check to see if the system has the proper flooded charge is on the coldest day of the year but it's pretty darn cold and it's pretty darn wet so uh, we're gonna keep looking at everything though a defrost clock this is the defrost clock for that system it would not shut off the fan motors but still it's currently 10 a.m. and it says 9 a.m. but that would not make it not run all day long we'll go ahead and set all the clocks since we're up here it's all just because of time change so that's that uh oh that's um this is the i'm wondering why that breaker's off this is the restaurant that i rewired the entire beer walk in and took out the heaters and stuff so that's what that is the heater circuit but yeah so far everything's looking good the other side of the rack is uh the rack itself is pretty clean hot discharge line warm liquid line i mean this really is looking like a nuisance call. Very interesting. Well, since we're in here, we're going to go ahead and check all the other side glasses just because I'm here. Their walk-in cooler is flashing, so that's not good. We'll bring that up to them, see if they want me to jump into that. I don't have a work order. Um, Beer walk-in's not running at the moment. Walk-in freezer's not running. So, all right, well, I'm gonna keep focusing on the cook drawers. Walking around, I noticed that this exhaust fan doesn't have a lid on it. The belt is loose, but it doesn't have a lid. Um, and I, I couldn't find it. I walked around the roof, but I actually found it over there in that corner. So, big picture, guys. I'm gonna trigger you people that don't work in restaurants. Look at my electrical room. I can't get to any of the mains. <laughs> um, I started checking the breaker panels. I'm looking for anything that could have shut this these cook drawers off. And uh, some of them, a lot of them are actually, there's one, but like for instance, they're missing the legend. So you barely have anything to go off of. That's always fun. But this one right here has a legend. Let's sneak over here. This one has a legend, and I found one labeled Reefer Equipment Base, and it says drawers right there. 
I confirmed that's this one right here. I turned it off and the fan motor's turned off, so I marked it for the next guy to make it easier. Um, it wasn't tripped, it was on, so I'm gonna let the customer know where that breaker is. Again, I still don't know. It's kind of hard. They said that the power was off, but I'm not getting like a confident answer that it was actually off, so. All right, so my investigative senses are tingling. So I turned the breaker on and I'm gonna walk you guys through my troubleshooting steps. I'm trying to see if I can find maybe a breaker that was tripping or a reason for it to trip. And I noticed that up here on this conduit, it looks like maybe that might be my power source. There's a receptacle ran off of it. So what I do, the receptacle has really weird voltage, 90 volts. But what's really interesting is that I'm gonna show you what happens here. So I'm gonna turn this breaker off for the cook's drawers, okay? All right, let's test this again. So mind you, I thought maybe this might be connected to that breaker because of where the conduit is going, right? How's about them apples? 120 volts when I turn off the breaker. Again, you can't just walk away from a problem. Now, I may not be fixing this. This might be an electrician's issue. We'll find out. I'm thinking maybe a bad neutral or a loose neutral or something like that. You gotta be very careful though. Um, I'm gonna open up. I don't think this griddle's on yet. Actually, it is on. So I'm gonna have him turn it off and I'm gonna open up this J box and see if there's something funky going on in there. So again, with the breaker on for the fan motors, I have like 90 volts. With the breaker off for the fan motors, I have 120 volts. So I thought maybe like this, this was plugged into that receptacle. I thought maybe this was tripping the breaker, but when I plugged it in, it had no power. So let's plug it in right now. Let's see what happens. Still no power, but this light could be bad too. So who knows? Yeah, there's something funky going on here. It's hot. It's hot like it's getting hot, so I think the light might be bad. But yeah, so you can't just walk away from these things, so I'm gonna open that up right now. All right. So I see grease in there, but I don't see anything scary, but the only problem is, this happens a lot. There's another outlet box back behind here. So the real outlet box is on, the in, on that wall. So it's, there's two outlet boxes there, and there's probably some junction and some wire nuts and stuff in there. So I'm gonna poke my nose in there. Also gotta be careful too, because even though I, this isn't hot enough to, well, it's pretty damn hot, but I turned it off, but there's still heat coming out the back. It's not melt my gloves hot, but. So I'll get you guys a view in there. See, there's wire nuts back in there that could be loose. There's all kinds of weird stuff. I have a very strong feeling that that's my junction point for the cook stores. I'm underneath a pizza oven over here on the side, there's also another cover plate. I don't know if it has anything to do with electrical, but I'm gonna open it up just to see. All right, so this looks like it might be my main junction point. So I'm gonna open this up and check voltage here to make sure I have accurate voltage going to my fan motors. So I currently have no voltage right here, but I do have the breaker turned off. So I'm gonna turn it on and make sure that we have a full 120 volts going to the fan motors. Make sure that goofy stuff that's happening at that other receptacle isn't happening here. All right, let's get back in here. Ow, let's get my head, that really hurt. Damn it, compress my neck. Fuck. Okay. That's weird. Let me try to reposition them in there a little bit better. Okay. Let's test this again. That's not good. This thing's not getting good voltage either. Fan motors are off and I have the breaker on, so this is definitely my power source right there. All right, so we're gonna do a couple little experiments right here. So what I did was I stripped the wires back, got clean wire, right? So we're gonna test across like 70 volts, 47 volts. It's really weird, right? So then let's test power to ground. 72 volts power to uh, black to ground. 
nothing from white to ground, so we don't have our colors mixed up. So I was thinking like a neutral issue, but I don't think that's the case. We might have an issue at the panel. Maybe we got a, a burnt bus bar or something. This is interesting. This is getting to be a mystery. Yeah, so I opened up the panel just to investigate. Again, don't ever open up panels without knowing what you're doing and or being qualified to do so. I am neither, but I did it on my own. All right, um, so I marked the breaker before I opened it up so I can test. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and test phases. I don't see a burnt bus bar, there's discoloration. We're gonna test three phase coming in, three phase going out, and then we'll test the breaker. A to B, B to C, A to C, 2083 phase. Test A to B, B to C, ah, there you go. B to C, on this guy, they got an issue. Look at that. B to C has 64 volts. They got some problems here. Let's go A to C. One forty-five. Yeah, there's an issue with this breaker. Whether it's tripped or what, I'm surprised they're not seeing more issues as of yet, and they're only calling about their refrigerator. They're lucky they don't burn a bunch of crap out. Let's go ahead and uh, test. 72 volts from C to neutral, 120 from B to neutral. So the problem is with our C phase, Charlie, C is in Charlie. All right, so I put the panel back together. Now, I want to turn that breaker off and turn it back on, but you got to think about a few things here. Right now, we got two phases working. Who's to say that that breaker isn't internally damaged? I don't want to cause any more damage right now. So I don't know, you know, I instructed them to call an electrician right quick, get them out here. But I did tell them that there's got to be other stuff inside of here that's not working. I mean, you know, because one phase is down, who knows? But there's so many things in here. So I'm not going to reset the breaker just because I don't want to cause any more damage and or make other things stop working. Uh, you know, thinking about what could happen. I know that there's potentially damage already being created by only... Uh, you know, not correct phase coming to equipment. So essentially, we've got 208 volt circuits in there. Um, I mean, it's pretty good odds that this right here isn't working right. Who knows? It's hard to say. But this is beyond my scope of work because I'm not an electrician. So I, I called their facilities department, got them calling the electrician, and uh, we're gonna keep this, uh, let the, them take care of this. The other thing too is I, for safety, went ahead and shut off my cook drawers for now. And, um, uh, that way they can turn it on once they fix whatever the issue is. It may just be a bad breaker. You may be able to turn it off and turn it back on and get it working, but regardless, there's an issue there. I started thinking about it. To make it easier for the electrician, I opened the panel back up and uh, got pictures of the breaker and pictures of everything that was going on, and then I actually had them call the electrician and I talked to him, so that way he can have a breaker when he comes out here because there's nothing worse than driving all the way out here to find out you need a breaker and then having to go across all around the world to find it. So at least he knows what he needs now and then that way he can come out with the breaker. Um, that's it, we're gonna close this one up and uh, they can do everything when they are done. As usual, I really don't like to just walk away from the problem, you know, just because I realized that it was going to be an electrician's issue. I still like to investigate further just to make it make sense within my head. Right. And initially I was saying, Hey, maybe there's a problem with the neutral, maybe something's going on, but I kind of proved that to be not the truth. Right. Because, um, when I finally got to the side of the, uh, cook stores and opened up that cover plate, and checked from the black wire to ground, I saw what 70 volts and then from the white wire to ground nothing. <clears throat> so I kind of, you know, figured out that it was a line voltage problem. And then that's what made me kind of go back to the electrical panel and open it up. Uh, as usual, you know, those electrical rooms are always a mess. They're always crowded with stuff. 
you know, the, the restaurants, they all do that. And I know that triggers everybody. Oh my gosh, that's against code. That's against the law. That's fire code. All that. it, it, yes, it is. It's against all those different codes, but you try to convince these restaurants to do that. It's, it just doesn't happen. Every electrical room is jam packed full of crap and that's just how they do it. They're so limited for space. They just use them for storage all the time. And there's nothing right about it, but you're not going to solve the problem. Okay. I'm not going to prove a point and call the code inspector or something like that. It's then I wouldn't be working at that restaurant anymore. It's just, you know, I, I of course advise the restaurant, Hey, you need to get this room cleaned out. And actually, um, on this situation, what I actually did was when I had to open up that panel, I went and grabbed the restaurant. I said, you guys need to get all this crap out of here for safety reasons. That way I could, you know, move around inside there. But yeah, they constantly do that. And in fact, what I didn't show in the video is um, <clears throat> behind all those boxes was the main breakers for everything. And one of the main breakers was actually the the, the little uh, plastic piece that sticks out that you switch on and off was actually broken off because it had been jammed with crap for so long that it broke the plastic off. So you can't even reset the breaker like... <clears throat> Not for the one we were working on, but yeah, it's just like a mess. Um, you know, I usually go a little bit further than I'm probably supposed to by opening up the panel and kind of investigating, but I like to know what's going on and I'm just a curious person. Um, you have to be uh, extremely careful doing that because when you open up a panel like that, you're susceptible to all kinds of problems and um, you have to make sure that you are qualified um, and know what you're doing before you open one of those up because you can definitely hurt yourself or hurt other people. So uh, just because you see some idiot do it in a YouTube video, don't, you know, go out there and start opening up panels, you know, uh, especially if you're not allowed to. So um, there really wasn't too much more going on on this one. What I ended up doing was, uh, like I said in the video, I ended up talking to the electrician, uh, explaining everything to him, sending him pictures, pictures of the breaker and everything. So that way he was totally aware and knew what he needed. Um, <clears throat> I know that he came out that day, whether or not he changed the breaker that I don't know because I was done with it. I also left my cook's drawers, the one that they initially called me on, off. Um, and I don't know if you guys noticed something too, that my cook's drawers, the fan motors were running on 70 volts. So that's really interesting too. Um, and that's why I left it off when I left because I knew that it was probably overheating those motors and potentially causing a problem. So I went ahead and instructed the electrician that when he was done, he could turn everything on in that panel. So that way he knew. Um, but yeah, it must've just been an intermittent thing, you know? So, uh, at first I expressed like, maybe this is a nuisance call in the beginning of the call, but it actually ended up not being a nuisance call. So you can't just assume because a motor's running that it has proper power. You have to actually check. And in my situation, I didn't have proper power. So theoretically, after I left, those motors would have shut off as they overheated, you know? So big picture diagnosis as always guys okay um really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos do me a favor uh come check out my live stream monday evening 5 p.m pacific uh work permitting i go live and talk about these videos answer questions uh also started a new youtube channel hvacr tools uh will be i've got one video up on there we'll be uploading some more soon so please go give that channel a subscription and uh yeah that's pretty much it guys i really appreciate it and we will catch you guys on the next one